Thanks for having a look at Paint Tutor. I'm showing you the screen that comes up straight after okaying the license. In the top left hand area you see the palette which in this case has about six colors and the central area which has the target color in this case the green. If you move to the bottom of the screen there is a whole strip of colors. Those are all the preloaded target colors and obviously at the moment the green is highlighted which is why it's popping up in the palette. On the top right hand side are the controls for adding and taking away paint. So if you click on the plus you can add paint and if you click on the minus you can take paint away and if you click on it again then you deactivate the painting. In the middle area there's a, a text report of what the current mix might be, which obviously at the moment there's no mix, so there's no report. There's also a number which is a, gives some idea of the color distance between um, your current mix and the target you're trying to match. Um, there are various formulas worked out by color scientists over time. Um, the main thing to keep in mind at this point is lower is better. Let's start mixing straight away. Um, I like to try and match this blue-green color. And um, first of all, we'll start by just having some blue, ultramarine in this case. Now you can also, let's immediately start adding some white. You see each time I click on the white, 1% is added. That's a little bit slow, so Let's, let's make each click worth uh, 5%. So that's better. And you see we quickly get to something which is probably um, okay on the lightness side, but really the hue is far too blue. It needs some green. So let's add in some green. The hue immediately starts improving. We can see the color distance here is dropping. Um, but of course it's not really enough white anymore, it's gone too dark, so I add in a bit of white. And soon you see we're getting, we're getting quite a low number there, and most importantly, by eye you can tell that there's not much of a difference between the mix and the target anymore. I'm going to cheat now, and have the computer solve it exactly, and uh, there we have an exact solution, or not, not exact, but at least close enough that it's virtually impossible to tell apart by eye. Do one more color. Let's try the yellow. Now you see I'm clicking on the yellow and nothing happens, and the reason is the painting is still activated. So let's deactivate that. Click on the yellow and solve it. In this case we've got something interesting. Obviously there's a mix between the yellow and the white, but there are two um, colors in here that are in very small amounts. The naphthol red, uh, one in 200, and just a tiny bit of carbon black as well. They are very important to matching um, the color though, which you can see by taking them away. First of all, let's take away the tiny bit of black and immediately we see the the chroma has intent or the, the intensity of the the mix has gone up it's not quite the, what the target is anymore and if we now take away the red well that's quite a big change now there are a few reasons for that one is um, there's obviously the change in hue there's um, probably a little bit of change in chroma but very important is also this yellow paint, this intense Hansa yellow, um, doesn't really have a screen equivalent, so that's why it has this tiny red border around it to warn us of that. And what happened when I took the red out was it, it effectively went went uh, outside of what the screen can display properly. So uh, the red border warns you to be a little bit careful when evaluating a color. Let's resolve that, and there we've got a very good match. Well, thanks for listening to Mixing and Matching.